What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add product images to our homepage for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add product images to our homepage programmatically. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership to all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we added these templates. In this video, I want to change these little placeholder things to our actual products. And it's actually pretty easy, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Let's see, actually, the first thing we can do is let's head back over to the website and let's go to the admin area. Now we don't actually have any of this backend stuff hooked into the website on the front end itself. So we can't like log in and do stuff on the website. We have to do everything in the admin area for now. We'll build out that functionality eventually, but for now we can just sort of play around back here in this admin area. And the first thing we need to do is let's add a new category. And you can see this says categories. I mentioned this a couple of videos ago, Django pluralizes this goofy. We can actually fix that if we want. Head back over to our models.py file. And in our category class here, we can give this a class of meta and then create a verbose underscore name underscore plural and set that equal to whatever we want. Let's just call this uh, categories plural. And special thanks to Dave Rob 2011 for <laughs> pointing this out. Should have done this earlier. I just didn't think of it. He commented on the video a couple of videos ago, so I'll put his name in there. <laughs> so we can head back over here and hit reload. And now this says categories. It looks a little better. So let's come back over here. I added another category called books. I just clicked add category, typed in books, and saved it. Uh, so you can see now we have books. Now, if we come back over to products, I uploaded a bunch of product images. And these are just books that I've published. So for now, we're going to make a book e-commerce site. We'll, we'll add other categories and other products for now. But just to get this thing up and running, have something on the web page. I just used a bunch of images I already have. So for instance, we can click on this and uh, there's the image of that. So before I recorded this video, I just uploaded a bunch of these. And to do that, I just clicked add product, put the name, pick the price, put books, put a little description, uploaded the file. You can see, <laughs> these are the ones I uploaded and then saved it. So we've got all of this stuff here. How do we now get it onto the homepage? So when we go to our homepage, instead of these things showing up, we want the actual products. So how do we do that? Well, super simple. Let's head back over to our code. And we want, let's see, our views.py file. And inside of here, we can look up stuff in our database. We just have to import it first up here. So let's go from dot models. We want to import our product model. And if we head back over to our models.py file, that's just this thing right here. This class is holding all of our products. And you see inside of here, it has the name, the price, the category, the description, and the image. So we might want to add some stuff to this later on. We probably will. Uh, sale prices, for instance, whether or not it is on sale, uh, you know, things like that we might add. But for now, this is what we've got. So we can import that right there. Now we can use this in our homepage by making a query into the database for that model. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it products. Call it anything you want, but these are products. So that makes sense. And we just want to look up in our database, the product model, and we want to get the objects from it and we want to get all of them. So this will basically look up everything in the products model in the database and output it to this variable. So now we can just pass this variable to our homepage in our context dictionary right here by typing in products in quotes and then products. So, okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, if we head over to our templates directory and click on our homepage, and this is our actual homepage, we come down here and you can see, just sort of look through here. It says shop and style there. Well, there, that's that shop and style. So we're getting close. We need to go below that. So sort of look down here. And here we have our first product. And we need to determine what code is making each of these little boxes. So to do that, I'm just going to kind of tinker around here. I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to type in test. I'm going to save this, head back over here, hit reload on. Okay. That's over there. That's probably not right. That's close, but not quite. So I'll get rid of that. And I'm just going to go down a line and let's try it right here. 
Oh no, good. Now it looks like we're in the right spot. Now we just need to determine what each of these boxes are. So if we look through here, we see this is a class of a row. And if we click on it, underneath it, it sort of underlines. If we come down here, we can see where the closing tag is for that. And it's gonna be way down here, probably. Yeah, you can see right here, it's highlighting it. So all of this stuff between that tag, or those two tags, I should say, right there, that is all of these boxes, right? So, okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Now, if we click on here and sort of scroll down here, we see here's a closing div tag. So let's see, that was this guy right here. So I think this is probably the stuff we need. So this is a div with a class call MB5. It's got a card thing. Uh, there's an image. And if we look at the next one, we see the same thing, call MB5. There's a card thing, and then there's an image. So that looks like this is it. So this is the thing we need to duplicate. So I'm gonna copy all of this. And for now, I'm just gonna sort of tab all this down and paste this in again. In front of this, we need a for loop. Let's go for product in products. And actually, well, let's get rid of this test thing too. We can just onto the screen, type in our products and see what's getting returned here. So let, let me copy this and delete it. And let's just save this, head back over here. And when we hit reload, we see we have this query set with each of the items in our product model. There's the Python programming book, the tkinter programming book, and each of these things is listed here. So that's what's getting returned when we go to reviews.pyfile and we look up everything in the products model and then output it right here. That is this stuff, and that's getting returned to the screen as this weird object query set thing, right? So, okay, we've got that. Now, instead of just sort of spitting it up on the screen like that, let's paste this back in here and let's loop through that product. And I misspelled products. So, products. <laughs> there we go. Now, whenever we have a for loop, we always have to close the for loop. So, I'm going to come down here and end our for loop. There we go. Okay, so we've got our for loop. So for product in, oh, I misspelled this again. <laughs> I cannot catch a break this morning. All right, so now if we just save this and head back over here, it's gonna print out essentially one of these guys eight times. So if we hit reload, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the original eight that were already on there. But you know, you see we have 16 of these, but they're just the same thing. They all say fancy product. So what we need to do is come through here and put in our actual information. So let's come through here and look at this. And the first thing we want to do is put the image. So that's this guy right here. So if I get rid of that, and you can see this is an IMG SRC tag, which is an image tag. And here we just want to put our product dot, what do we want to put? Well, let's look at our models.py file and we see the image is called image, right? So all we have to do is product dot image. For images though, we want the URL and this, is not actually in our models.py file, but Django will create this for image stuff. And that'll give the URL of the image, which is what we wanna output here. So if we go ahead and save this and head back over here and hit reload, boom, just like that, we have all of our images. Very cool. And you'll notice these will resize, the images get a little bigger because this is a responsive theme, so that's cool. All right, so we've got the images for all of our products here. Now we want to change the title. So how do we do that? So let's head over here and right here it says fancy product. Instead of that, we want these double brackets and we just want product.name. Why.name? Because in our models.py file, that's what we named the name, right? So we've also got the price category and description. And for now we just need the price. So let's come down here and here's the price section. And I'm gonna leave the little dollar sign there and let's go product.price. So now if we go ahead and save this, we've also got this view options. We're gonna leave that for now. We'll build that out later. But now if we come back here and hit reload, we see Python programming, tkinter programming, Ruby programming, Ruby on Rails, and the price for each one. Very cool. Now we could also add the description on here if we wanted to. It's not built into this thing right now, so we'll just leave it for now. But you know, if you wanted to, you could just come down here and well, let's see where would we want it. We would want it probably underneath the price. 
you could probably just put a line break and go something like product dot description go uh, because in our models.py file we have a description setting there so we can go back save this and back over here i don't have much of a description i just have the title again so and you could do that if you wanted to or you could do something like instead of product description you could put category and let's put in i don't know something like that oops uh, what do we got here? Models. I misspelled category. <laughs> yes, I did. Man, I'm having trouble with spelling today. In books, right? Whatever. You can play around with this. I'm going to take that out. I don't really want this right now. Just because the template doesn't really account for these things. And we'll play around with all this stuff later and add things and, and stuff like that. For now, in this video, I just want to get this sort of up and running. Get rid of that. This view options, we don't have anything here for that yet. This will probably go to the product page where there'll be more information. We'll get into that later on. But yeah, just that easy to get our products up and running on the home page. Very cool. Now, we've also got all of these things underneath. Some of these have sale on them. Some of these have a little star system. We'll probably build out a star system way later on so people can rate your products and things like that. That's going to be a more advanced topic we'll do many weeks from now. I don't want to forget that these are here, but I also kind of don't want all of these things on the screen. This little sale thing is nice. We'll probably program that in as well, like I said, later on. Yeah, what do you say? Let's get rid of all of these things. Let's come down here and I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to highlight all of these. One, two, three, four, five, it looks like six, seven, uh, eight, something like that. Oh, now here's where it gets tricky. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of that. Let's click on this. And what we want here. Uh, we probably want to get rid of this guy as well. All right. Let's see if we got that right. Let's come back here. Hit reload. All right. Those are, those are all gone. Nothing else is really messed up. All right. Looks good. Just to make sure, though, I'm going to come up here to... Well, first, let's get rid of some of this space here. I'm going to come up here to this, this row guy. I'm going to click on here. You see it underlines there. I'm going to come down here. And yep, this closing div still highlights. All right. It looks like we <laughs> deleted the right things and we're good to go. So that's how you add products and their images to our homepage. Now, we'll have other pages of the site that will have like different categories of stuff. But right now, we just have one category, the book category. So it's very simple. But like I said, as we get into this, we'll make it more complex. But for now, yeah, that was pretty quick and easy, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com, where you could use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.